irrational fear is like, like okay, perhaps you've um, experienced a heartbreak before, or your brain is telling you like to be fearful of men going forward, and it's like actually that's irrational because you're basing it off of your one experience. But of course, your body and your brain is like, yeah, but that trauma was a lot. Like you don't want to go. Hello, that. everyone, and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Krupa, and I create faith-based content here on YouTube. So today's video, we are talking about that very loved thing called fear. Just a little disclaimer, yes, the lights are different this time. And the reason being is that outside, currently it is about to rain. It's about to pour actually. And so we are getting very minimal daylight right now. And so we are working with some beautiful artificial light. So fear, right, is one of those things that we hate, but also it's one of those things that we love to kind of respect because it might be our brains trying to keep us safe, right? And so if you feel like you're currently walking through a season where you're fearful about the next step, whatever it is that you're walking through, if there's fear attached to it and you feel like you're currently walking in that right now, then this video is for you. The first thing on that list is in fact that fear and one of the things that I've learned about fear is that it's our bodies and our brains way of keeping us from harm. But here's the thing, what does the Bible say about that? The scripture I have for us today is found in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 and it says, for God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power, love and self-control. Some versions say sound mind, which I really like too. Oh my gosh, it's really boring. So yeah, I'm all about respecting our brains, respecting our bodies, because sometimes what it is, is that your brain and your body has experienced a certain kind of like anxiety or certain kind of like hurt or harm. And later on in life, it's got like a muscle memory of that trauma. It's replaying that trauma, it's replaying what could possibly happen if you were to take this step. And so what I'm really touching on here is irrational fears. Irrational fear could be like, okay, I've touched a hot pot before and it's really burnt my finger. I'm not gonna do that again. An irrational fear is that like, okay, perhaps you've um, experienced a heartbreak before or your brain is telling you like to be fearful of men going forward. And it's like, actually that's irrational because you're basing it off of your one experience. But of course your body and your brain is like, yeah, yeah, but that trauma was a lot like you don't want to go through that again does that make sense and so this point and this scripture the reason why I bring it to mind for my sisters here on YouTube is that sometimes yes we need to respect our you know bodies telling us that there is harm ahead and to keep us safe right but sometimes also it's about leaping beyond that fear and reminding ourselves that the Bible says that actually the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. So what has he given us instead, right? He's given us a spirit of power, of love and a sound mind. And those three things can overpower fear. So that's kind of what I want to remind you of with this first point. So the next point, I have learned that Fear is the enemy's way to distract us from true freedom. I'm really hoping that you can pick up on my like sound because we're hearing rain, 365 degrees here. So going back to what we were talking about, I feel like fear is the enemy's way or the enemy's device to keep us from living in true freedom. And the scripture I have for us here is found in 1 John 4, 18. And it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. I love that scripture. I love it so much that I got it inscribed on my skin, and then I tried to remove it. Not because I don't love the scripture, okay, but because it's wonky, what on earth? Living in true freedom with Christ is trusting in him and having faith that he has gone before us, right? And why do I think the enemy uses fear as a trap to keep us from living in true freedom? It's, it's because it's crippling. Fear is crippling. If your objective of life was to 
counteract everything that God wanted to do or everything that God desired to see in these children. In this case, we're talking about his children living in true freedom and, and, and liberated, right? Then why wouldn't you use the tactic of crippling the children so that they don't live in true freedom? And so I believe the enemy comes with lies about the harm ahead of us, about the unknown ahead of us, about the consequences ahead of us. He comes with these lies so that we can live crippled. Oh my gosh, this is like anti-YouTube recording kind of weather. I'm gonna stress out about it, although I am a little stressed out about it right now, but it's fine. If you are found in that situation, sis, where the enemy is lying to you about the consequences ahead of you, even though nothing is actually proven that this will be the consequence ahead of you, then sis, rebuke him and keep it moving. So if you're enjoying this video thus far, you already know what you've got to do. You've got to go ahead and give this video a like. It lets me know that you have made it this far into the video, but it also lets me know that you are enjoying content like this. So go ahead and give this video a like and let's get back into it. So the last thing on my list on what I have learned about fear is that fear is the opposite of faith as we know it and as we know it very well that the Bible actually tells us 365 times not to be afraid. The scripture I have for us in this point is in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 and says trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I love this because when we think of this, we're thinking of like seeking God for wisdom and seeking the Lord's ways and asking him to order our steps, right? And yes, 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 like completely yes. But also what I see in this scripture is that it's got a lot to do with overcoming fear. And the reason why I say that is that sometimes fear is really down to just trusting in our own understanding, trusting in what we believe are the consequences or the steps following what we're about to do. Don't forget, the Lord does not impose himself on his children. It's always a free will to follow him, right? And in the same breath, in the same scenario, when we are faced with fear, it's always on us to make that decision. And when we decide not to be overtaken, this is where faith really comes to life. And this is where we're able to really grow in our faith. And so if you are taking anything away from this video, let it be this, that when you are faced with fear, because, and I say when, because even the Bible acknowledges that this is a daily reality for most of us. And so when you are faced with fear, look at fear in the face and decide, whether or not you're going to overcome it which is then now a question of overcoming it with faith or you're going to turn away and be completely crippled by it and therefore look for another solution around whatever it is that you're feeling fearful of and i'm really hoping you're not going to choose the way of the latter and you're going to choose the way of the former because this is truly where you experience walking with the Holy Spirit and the joys and the strength of the Lord. Yes. Let me just close it off here because the weather is not permitting me to continue right now. So let me know in the comment section down below for our discussion round today, what have you learned about overcoming fear so that we can learn from each other, you know? So without further ado, I'll see you in the comment section down below but I will also see you in the next video. Bye.